Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today I'm going to show you a couple of plants that I switched from soil to LECA a year ago. And yeah, I guess this is like a before and after video looking at plant growth. And guys, I am really excited because today we're talking about a couple of my favorites. And yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys because these plants, I again have no words. So the two plants I'm going to talk about today are my Monstera albaborzigiana. This plant was really stressful in the beginning just in regards to, you know, losing variegation. I have a different outlook and mindset when it comes to that now. So now I could just appreciate her and just be happy that she exists. The second plant is the Monstera Thai constellation, one of my favorites in my collection. This plant is a beast. In this video, I'll talk about the journey of these two plants from when I transitioned them from soil to LECA. Again, that was a year ago. That was in March 2020. And it is March 2021. And I am going to show you how they're doing. Before I start this video, if you like these kind of videos and you like my content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. And also follow me on Instagram if you want to see plant growth updates, if you like planty things, all that stuff. Okay, let's jump into the video. Okay, so I'm going to just show you some pictures, talk a little bit about the plants and the growth, and then afterwards I'll show you the plant. So the first plant is the Monstera albaborzigiana. So I got this plant in September 2019. I first put this plant in a very chunky soil. And on top of that, I put it in a terracotta pot <sighs> because I was so worried about root rot and like everyone was talking about root rot. I barely watered it, which was the wrong decision because although we do like chunky mixes, if you put in a chunky mix, you don't water it a lot and you have it in a terracotta pot which will essentially suck up all the moisture. All the moisture. Ugh, I'm doing that thing where I can't pronounce words again. Anyways, the medium just dried out too much and it kind of robbed the plant of water. She did survive and the second picture here is from three months later. She decided to finally push out a leaf. This leaf was smaller than the other two and based on my experience when I first get a plant, the first leaf is usually very small just because the plant has been put through stress with shipping and obviously acclimating to its new environment. In my case, I did put additional stress by not watering it a lot. And to be honest, this plant was sitting in a low to medium light kind of environment. The next time it decided to push out a leaf was in March 2020. So it essentially didn't do anything for two to three months. And again, guys, it was a very small leaf. So at that point, I decided to transfer it into LECA. You can take a look here, guys. It did have pretty healthy roots still. And also, side note, I look like a crazy person. Look at those bowls. They're dog bowls, by the way, full of LECA. And I'm sure your next question is, do you have a dog? No, I don't. I just bought these bowls because they could hold large quantities of LECA at the time. I don't even know what I was thinking. I should have just bought a bucket. Okay, so this picture here, this picture will serve as like kind of the before picture. I'll show this picture again when I compare how she's doing today, but you could see that she's a little cutie and yeah. Two months later, this video is from May 2020. She looks the same. And I think she looks the same because uh, I guess the plant was adjusting again. After this, she did push out another leaf, which ended up being really small again. But then guys, ooh, she started growing rapidly, specifically with the roots. And that's when the plant's leaves started to mature. So the plant pushed out this leaf. This is the first leaf with a fenestration. And at that point, I didn't care that half of it was green. I was very happy to see that. I think at this point, because she was well acclimated to LECA and passive hydroponics and the root system was really healthy, she just started pushing out leaves at a rate of, at a, I can't talk, at a rate of a leaf per month. 
I think that's the normal growth rate for an elbow. And um, if you thought the winter was gonna stop her, it didn't. Okay, so now I'll show you how she's doing today. Before I do that, I'll show you the picture again. Here's the picture for March, 2020. And oh my gosh, she's so small, look at her. Okay, let me go grab her. Oh, she's heavy guys. But this is the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. So look at these leaves. Okay, let me, where do I put her? Ooh. Okay, so I think to show you a closer look, I'm just going to bring you guys with me here uh, to the plant. Alrighty, here she is in all her glory. For those that are wondering, this is the newest leaf. She is gorgeous and she's putting out a new leaf. It looks like it's gonna be green, oh no. Okay, but also I wanna point out that <laughs> although it looks very sad and crispy, specifically in the white areas, this is the oldest leaf here. And I'll show you a picture just to the side. This is that same leaf. So she is still hanging on. This kind of shows me that I'm supplying the plant with enough light, enough nutrients, all the stuff that it likes because if it needed any of that, it would take mobile nutrients from the oldest growth and then this growth would turn yellow. So yeah, again, this is that leaf, that small little tiny leaf and I'll put it in my hand just to compare the size and show you guys how small it is. But yeah, I guess I'll recap. This is the small leaf that I was talking about and then it pushed out another small leaf, a little bit bigger. And then this leaf, guys, the one with the fenestration. Then this one, this one has the most white. Then this one, then moving to the right with this one. Then this one, and then the last one over here. She is a stunner. So yeah, she is a beauty. Um, I guess I'll point out also, there is a second elbow on this side. I actually got this, I think it was August or September. Um, I'll talk about her quickly. The oldest leaf here had a bunch of variegation. She's a little cutie. Again, because of acclimation and everything, she started pushing out leaves without fenestrations. And then she also lost a lot of her variegation. Like this leaf is totally green. The one after that had speckling here. And then the most recent leaf is essentially all green. So I was going to wait for a couple more leaves. And then at that point, if there wasn't any variegation, I was going to propagate it. So I will keep you guys updated in regards to that. So yeah, I guess the last thing I wanna show you guys about the elbow is, I guess, the roots. Okay guys, I guess this is the easiest way I'm like squatted on the ground, but here are the roots. So you'll notice with this one, the Monstera Thai Constellation, that the roots have grown out of the Leka and the net pot. And you know what? A lot of people have conflicting opinions about this. A lot of people do cut them off and essentially the root will branch um, just more roots. But I have the thought that they're actually okay sitting in the nutrient solution and in the water. So I just keep her the way she is because, I mean, look at her, she's happy. So yeah, again, the first plant is the Monstera albaborzigiana. Okay, so moving on to the second plant, this is the Monstera Thai Constellation. So similar to the albo, I got this plant, I think it was October or November of 2019. And I kind of put it in the same situation that I did the elbow. I put it in a very chunky mixture in a terracotta pot and didn't really water it. Also, I forgot to mention that I actually bought two Thai constellations and both of them are still with me and they're in the same pot. Okay, so this picture is from December 2019 and she was not happy. I don't know if you could see in this picture, but the leaves are very yellow on the edges. And I guess, I don't know if you'll see it closer with this one. Maybe zoom in. Look at this leaf. It is yellow. I hate it. <sighs> at that point, I wasn't even thinking about Lekka. I was just like, let me start writing the eulogy. 
She did, however, push out a new leaf uh, that same month and then just completely stopped. These two pictures over here show you that the plant still had a really, really healthy root system. And yeah, I guess here they are uh, sitting next to the window. This was again March 2020 and will serve as the before picture. So fast forward three months to June 2020, it put out this gorgeous leaf with tons of cream on it. And then another one here. Oh my gosh, this picture is like too much. I mean, can you tell I love Canada? But yeah, this picture was taken for Canada Day, which is July 1st. And yeah, I guess you could kind of, you know, just remember this picture. I mean, at this time, I thought this plant was big, which is a joke because now she's like a monster. And actually, guys, after I took that picture, I took her out of the pot just because the roots were kind of getting, they were just like doing their thing. And yeah, that's this video here. You can see healthy, large roots. And so I put her in a net pot, the same net pot that she's in today. And I think this is the time it started pushing out leaves at a rapid rate. And I ultimately believe it's because the roots started growing even faster. And I think it's because the roots had access to more air in the net pot. So to showcase that, this picture is from October 2020. Look at those roots, but more importantly, look at that face of terror. Then similar to the elbow, she did not slow down over the winter and she was pushing out a new leaf every month. And this next sequence of pictures kind of shows that they were leaves with secondary fenestrations. Those are the holes at like the center of the leaf. And oh, I guess I'll show you guys now. So again, this picture's from March 2020, one year ago. And yeah, I guess I'll go grab her. Okay, I don't know if y'all could see me or if you could see a little bit of her over here, but she is a beast. And I gotta like prepare, like do my squats or something cause she is so heavy. <sighs> okay. So guys, this is the Monstera <laughs> Tide Constellation. She really is incredible. And guys, like, I mean, if I show you that Canada Day picture again, like I could carry her and still be in frame with the leaves. But now, like, look at this. This is crazy. You can't even see me. I mean, can you? I can't even see. Let me put it down. <laughs> And again, I am going to bring you over. Okay, so let's start off with the oldest leaf here. <laughs> She's a beauty still. Again, she didn't drop any leaves because I think I gave it enough light and enough nutrients. So yeah, she's still here today. Um, I'm not gonna go through all the leaves because there's a lot of them, but like, oh, these leaves are so beautiful, wow. And yeah, again, this is the newest leaf. She is large and in charge. Oh, like, can we do a head test? Let me just... <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, I do want to say this is probably the biggest pain when it comes to changing the nutrients and flushing and everything because it's hard to take the net pot out of the bucket just because the roots are so big. Oh, guys. Like, this is insane. <laughs> so you'll notice some browning. Um, there are a lot of times I do break the roots just by trying to put it back. So that's probably what happened. I'll remove it later. Similar to the elbow, if the monstera is happy uh, and the roots aren't rotting, um, then I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay, so now the struggle starts trying to put all the roots back into the pot without breaking out any of them. Oh, I got my arms. Okay guys, so again, the second plant is the monstera Thai constellation. Oh, she's really a beauty. You know what guys, you know how I said that there's two plants in here? 
I think I might chop up one of them. I'm not sure. Let me know if you guys want to see like an aggressive propagation of my Monstera Thai constellation. I know I did before a more conservative chop. Um, you could check out that video here if you haven't seen it before. But yeah, let me know if that's something you want to see. Um, I'm looking at one and I think the most I can get from one plant is three propagations. Okay, so I guess I'll move on to what kind of nutrients I use and the concentration. So to start off, I use the three-part Flora Series from General Hydroponics and it's three of these bottles. I use this purple one here. I use the Hard Water Flora Micro just because, little secret y'all, I do not use distilled water or reverse osmosis water, even though it's recommended. I live in Toronto and we actually have pretty good water. This is a highly debated topic about not using distilled or reverse osmosis just because water around the world, when they clean it, when they clean tap water, they can use either chlorine or chloramine. And ultimately that isn't necessarily good for your plant. But do you know what? I've been doing this for a year. My plants are happy. So I'm going to continue to do this three part while using the hard water flora micro. So the concentration that I use for the three um, liquids, uh, I follow the general purpose mild vegetative growth. So that is one teaspoon per gallon or five milliliters per gallon. So I do five milliliters per gallon, five milliliters per gallon, and five milliliters per gallon. I also use a calcium and magnesium supplement. So again, this is by General Hydroponics. And I use this because in my research and through experience, I guess the year that I've been growing my plants, plants in hydroponics or passive hydroponics, they tend to have uh, calcium and magnesium deficiencies. And so again, I just use a recommended dose on the bottle. Then I put in Diamond Nectar. This thing is amazing. So Diamond Nectar by General Hydroponics basically helps in the mobility of nutrients and it also helps stabilize the pH. So I actually don't need to put any pH up or down in my nutrient solution. Last but not least, something that I introduced in the fall, Rapid Start. Um, if you watched my propagation videos, I do use this a lot with my propagations, but I also use this with all of my plants. Like I said previously, I am working on a hydroponic series. It is a pain. There's so much to think about and talk about, but that will be coming your way in, <laughs> I know I said two weeks last video, two to three weeks, I promise. <sighs> okay guys, I guess that's it. So I will be putting a part four of this series um, I think in April or the beginning of April, I did uh, put a couple plants into LECA. Okay, so I guess stay tuned for part four and also stay tuned for that hydroponic series and that LECA series. I am excited and mortified and scared. And if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.